Welcome back to Genco Safety Supply. Today, we're covering the ABCs of fall protection. And who better to guide us through this crucial topic than an expert in the field? I'm thrilled to have Matt Holman, Regional Sales Manager at Fall Tech, here with us today to walk us through the ABCs of fall protection. Matt has an extensive knowledge of fall protection equipment, and he's here today to break down how anchorage, body wear, and connectors all work together to build the foundation of an adequate fall arrest system. Now, before we get started, a quick disclaimer. This video provides an explanation of basic fall protection systems. It's important to remember that your own specific needs may vary. Always consult a certified competent person when it comes to your specific fall protection requirements. With that out the way, let's jump in. How's it going? I'm Matt Homan with Fall Tech. I am the regional sales manager at Cover Ohio and Michigan. And I'm here to go through some product basics with you today. Kind of touch on the ABCs, anchorage, bodywear, connectors, devices. Depends on what you want to call these. Some may go into rescue a little bit. We can touch on that as we go through things. So like I said, I'm with Falltech. Falltech is a manufacturer of fall protection equipment. I can confidently and proudly say that we make and manufacture roughly 85% of our products here in the United States. We test and design all of our products here in the United States. So if you see products with our name on it, fall tech here, just like this one, pink products. If the fall tech name is on that product, I can confidently say we designed and tested that here in the United States. We do all of that out of our Compton, California headquarters. That's where we make and manufacture our products. We have an ISO 17025 testing lab that's where we do all of our ANSI compliant testing with a third party present. All right, like I said, with the ABCs of fall protection, the first piece being anchorage. Fall tech as a manufacturer has a variety of different anchor types, all designed for specific applications. Some with certain limitations, depending on the type of anchor you're using, you need to understand those limitations. Let me take, for instance, a temporary concrete anchor. This particular anchor is designed and tested for 6,000 pounds. This would be a great anchor for anchoring an SRL on a poured deck or into a poured ceiling. It's you drill a one inch hole and you use an anchor like this to anchor an SRL, or you could use it for a horizontal lifeline. That is with our horizontal lifelines on a four man system, we require a 6,000 pound anchor. This is a 6,000 pound anchor. But like I said, with any anchor in fall protection, they have their limitations. One limit to an anchor like this may be the type of concrete you're using. It could also be whether that concrete's cracked, stable, or thick enough to use an anchor like this. These are all things that need to be understood when choosing the proper anchor. So understanding those limitations is really important. And I'd say referencing the instruction manual on our website is your best option. Another very common anchor in fall protection is a pass-through anchor, also referred to sometimes as a choker, beam wrap, or just a simple pass-through. This anchor, being the most common anchor in fall protection, is also a very commonly misused anchor in fall protection. We often see in the field this anchor tied off just like this, as a basket. That's not how it's intended and designed to be used. It's intended to be used as pass through, put the smaller D ring through the bigger one and wrap it around the object that you've chosen to anchor to. Going into that, the object that you choose to wrap this to is just as important as the anchor itself. That object that you're tying to needs to be at least 5,000 pounds, being that it's a non-certified anchor. And that needs to be determined by a competent person of fall protection. If you don't have an anchor that you can competently choose to wrap this around, let's say it's a steel column, a concrete column, or an overhead I-beam, then you shouldn't use an anchor like this. That would be one of the limitations to this pass-through style anchor. Another piece is there's a wear pad on here and a fall protection life-saving portion of this anchor. Using it properly with the wear pad against the object you're wrapping it around is very important. 
Some other very common acre styles would be a beamer or a butterfly acre. First, I'm going to talk about a beamer. This acre is designed to be used on specific sized I-beams. You need to make sure that that I-beam, once again, determined by acres and competent in fall protection, that it can hold 5,000 pounds. These limitations are pretty clearly laid out in our instruction manual. So this beam, this acre would be put over a beam, most likely overhead, could be used at foot level. I'll talk about that here in a second. But understanding the limitations of this is also important. You want to make sure that your beam has an abrupt end to it, that this can't slide off the end of the beam, or your beam's not sloped. That would be really important. You would never want to tie this to a sloped beam. But like I said, looking at the instruction manual and understanding that this is going on of being strong enough to support 5,000 pounds is critical. Like I mentioned just a second ago, the location of the anchor point relative to the worker is really important. We always want to look for an overhead anchor. The higher overhead we can get, at least over the worker's head is preferred, the better the fall results will be. A below D-ring anchor point results in further fall distance, and further fall distance can result in a greater risk of injury to the worker. So we want to look to put this as far overhead as possible, and that goes with any anchor. Now I say that in choosing a safe anchor point is more important, but an overhead anchor point is preferred. This is a butterfly anchor typically known as a butterfly anchor, also known as a roof ridge anchor or temporary roof anchor. This anchor, just like any other that I mentioned, has its limitations and understanding those is really important to using it. There are specific holes outlined in an anchor like this and using those holes the way intended is really important and hitting either a truss or some kind of structural wood below your top sheathing is really important to an anchor like this. Another critical element of this anchor is not side loading it. We frequently see in the industry these mounted on a roof like this and the worker working downhill from it. They're not built or designed to take a load from the side. They're designed to take a load directionally down, a kind of point and arrow down the anchor point this way. And that's how the direct pull loads go. So just like anything else, has its limitations, understanding those are really important. A reference to our instruction manual on our website would be a really good start before diving into an anchor like this. Because among the anchors I've shown, this one is probably the most limited and one of the most likely to be used improperly anchors. As we work our way through the ABCs of fall protection, that would bring us to B to stand for body wear. This is your full body harness. This is a critical element in the fall protection system as it is the part that's most intimate to the worker. They wear this every day. So we're gonna go through the basics of the harness, uh, proper fit and donning. I am not going to take a full dive on harness inspection, but I do want you to know it is critical that a harness is inspected before every use, not um, first first of the day, not um, once a week. It needs inspected by the user before every use because there's always a risk that in the time that a worker left their harness for lunch or another why they weren't wearing it, that something could have happened to it. So we want to do a full inspection before every use. I'm not going to go through that full inspection um, today because we just don't have time, but it is important. So before I don this harness, I want to make sure I've got all the kinks out of it. Make sure it's it's not looped around itself. That's pretty frequent with the harness. And I want to make sure I have everything out of my pockets. So I'm going to go ahead and take my phone out of my pocket. The forces put on a worker's body in the event of a fall can easily crush a phone, break a knife, put a knife um, through somebody's leg. Those are all things you do not want to have near your, or against your body between the harness and yourself. So I start with the legs on the harness. This particular harness has uh, what we call comfort legs, lateral legs, what I tend to call them. They go around the thigh rather than through the worker's groin. From a safety standpoint and a comfort standpoint, this is preferred. 
From a comfort standpoint, it's simply more comfortable, so I'm more likely to wear leg straps the way that they're intended. And that is snug to my legs. I don't want these to be moving. I want them to stay snug to my leg in the event of a fall. And that would be kind of the critical element of harness fit, is what's gonna to happen to that harness in the event of a fall. So I've got the top buckled, legs nice and snug. I tend to go with a fit your hands in but can't make a fist. Some people do two fingers. If you can fit more than two fingers in, I'd say fit four fingers in but can't make a fist, you should be all right. Now, the other piece is this chest plate. I wanna make sure that this chest plate is right in the center of my chest. That this is perfect alignment for this chest plate. These are adjustable. They may not be adjustable with the front D-ring harness. So let me preface that. So torso adjusters are key to kind of get it into the right spot. We want to make sure that this isn't too loose because if this is too loose, there's always a possibility that a worker can fall out of the top of the harness. So if we keep these torso adjusters snug down, not to the point that you're uncomfortable, but tight enough that you can't pull the harness over your shoulders, it's a critical element after in the event of fall. The other piece is going to be that the back knee ring to the right spot. We want to look for between the shoulder blades face to the neck. That is going to help turn the worker upright in the event of a fall. A worst case scenario would be a head first fall of a worker. And if that worker's not, that D ring's not in the right spot, it's not going to turn them upright properly. And as they hang, this D ring being right here, I'm going to hang relatively straight up. If that back D-ring was down here lower on my back, I'd have more of a lean. We don't want that. That exposes the head uh, to multiple structures in the event of a swing fall. And in general, it's just a much worse hanging position. So with that being said, I'm gonna kind of look over my harness, make sure it's fit. Another piece is this sub pelvic strap. We need to make sure that is below the pelvis of the worker. That is a critical element in arresting a worker's fall. And if it's not below the worker's pelvis, they may not be properly arrested. They may uh, succumb to injuries, even though the fall arrest occurred, the fall protection arrested their fall. Another element I want you to look at on this harness is what's called suspension trauma release straps. These ship on this particular harness and ship on most of our harnesses. They are there to relieve the suspension trauma in the event of a fall. I'm not going to go in the full dive into what suspension trauma is, but it's critical that it is relieved or a worker is rescued in a prompt fashion before suspension trauma sets in. This particular harness has a, a loop style suspension trauma release straps. We have a loop on one end and a hook on the other. We're going to put those two together. And I always, 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 um, preface that workers do this at least one time to understand how this functions before they need to do this in the event of a fall. So key is getting that big loop together and getting it over your feet. This is obviously a little bit more difficult while you're hanging, but getting it over under your feet, put both your feet together, and then you're going to bend your knees and tighten this until you get to a nice position where you can stand up and that pressure is relieved on the inside of your thighs. That's really what we're trying to feel is the relief of pressure on the inside of your thighs and taking the pressure off. We don't want to shift the pressure to another position of the harness. We want to try and relieve it completely. And that's what suspension trauma relief straps are there. That pretty much summarizes harness wear and donning a harness. Now, some harnesses are built very different than this one I have on right now. This is a harness belted with positioning D-rings. There's a lot more that goes into fitting that harness than this one. This harness would be used um, more for a worker not wearing the tool belt, not wearing and not doing any work position. So this harness positioning D-rings built more for hanging and work positioning, co think concrete carpenter, um, and then a lot more padding. That padding is designed to support the extra weight of a tool belt. So. Across the whole spectrum of harnesses, there are a multitude of various features depending on what you actually need out of a harness. You can have 
a simple back D-ring. You can add front D-rings, positioning D-rings, sometimes with or without a belt. You can also add uh, different leg styles. So these are what's called tongue and buckle legs. These are tongue and buckle. There's also quick connect legs. That can be a preferred option. It's a little bit faster, but less likely to be adjusted every time. Um, within the construction industry, we tend to prefer tongue and buckle because they force the adjustment of the harness every time it's used. When looking at specific harnesses, you will find a variety of features. Some may or may not be necessary for the type of work you do. And all those features will come at a price point within that harness. So as you add features to a harness, you'll find that that harness becomes more expensive. Some of the more simple harnesses are a little bit more economical. But choosing the right harness is medical based on the type of work you're doing. And then proper harness fit is most important. If you cannot properly fit into the harness that you've chosen, you need to look for a different harness or reach out to somebody that might be able to help you get a proper harness fit. So as we go through the ABCs of fall protection, we're now going to talk about these, which would be your connectors. This may also be looped in with devices. I tend to go and tie them together, connectors and devices. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Your basic SRLs is going to be the main point of conversation. Now, SRLs can be really intimidating because there are a variety of different types and styles. And there's some lingo that goes with them too that can be really confusing. So with that being said, it's, we're going to touch on one of the most critical elements of choosing the right SRL, and that is understanding ANSI Z359.14-2021. That 2021 standard separates SRLs into classes. That would be class one and class two. Class one SRLs are gonna be something like this 30 foot fall tech contractor. This is a class one device, as you can see by the class one labeling on the back. This is considered an overhead only SRO. We would want to make sure that this anchor point is well above the worker. And that way when they, if worst case scenario, they were to take a fall, this SRL should not come in contact with a sharp or abrasive edge. That's the goal of keeping it overhead. The fear would be using a class one device like this below the worker's back D ring. And then take a fall, that worker takes a fall this SRL cable is going to fall, is going to bend over an edge. It would be very difficult for a worker to take a fall with a below D ring tie off where the webbing for cable material does not go over an edge. So ANSI has eliminated that opportunity of risk by telling you, you want to use a class one device, go ahead and anchor it overhead. It does not need to be leading edge or rated for edge action. So this is a 30 foot class one overhead SRL. That would be the class two side. Now this is an SRL key or personal SRL, but it's a class two device. As you can see on the back, it has these small class two labeling. This is rated for overhead use and all the way back, all the way down to five feet below the worker's back D-ray. So that back D-ray is gonna be our point of measurement below or above. So class two covers the full spectrum, five quote below D-ring to overhead, whereas class one is just overhead. The most important piece that makes this SRL class two is its ability to survive a sharp edge. It's also referred to as the leading edge and may soon just be referred to as class two as the term for leading edge. So this SRL is designed with the shock pack on the worker's back and that is the most critical element in a leading edge SRL, is that that shock pack stays on the worker's back to limit the forces applied to their body. Is also a class two SRL. It looks a lot different, it looks much like the contractor I just showed you. This is called the FTR. You can see it has the block class two labeling. If you were to tie this SRL off at foot level, a worker will be wearing this on their back. This is the shock pack. We want to keep that shock pack on the worker's back. It's critical in a leading edge fall that it's there to help absorb the forces of the fall and not isolated at the anchor point. 
Like I said, this is a 30 foot SRL. This comes in a variety 20, 30, and 60 foot. If you look at um, our last Savoy Kytrek SRL, it's 20, 30, 50 foot. We also have a 100 foot version. Our SRLPs are much more limited in their length. We don't want a worker standing well beyond their kind of scope of work with an SRLP. So this is an eight foot SRLP, able material. Twin SRL. A big part of fall protection is remaining anchored at all times. If a worker needs to navigate across a deck or um, around a pole of some kind, they need to be able to disconnect and reconnect. And that's where their twin would come at play. And you need both anchor, being both legs of this SRL to anchor one before disconnecting the other one. That's often referred to as 100% tie off. And you'll notice there are two pelican whoops on this particular SRL. And that's how you navigate 100% tie off is with intermittent connection to both things. A difference. This is our FTX eight foot cable. We also had an NTS eight foot edge core. This is also a leading edge SRL. This webbing material is designed and tested to survive a sharp edge. There's Kevlar built into this webbing within this Dyneema Rapis Kevlar. What that does is also makes a more flexible material. But while on the worker's back, these are at your anchor point. So if you've had this at your anchor point and this would be on the worker's back, this shot back stays on their back as the most important part of the leading edge SRL. That being said, that's the basics, ABCs of fall protection. Uh, like I said before, I'm Matt Tobin with Fall Tech. We are a manufacturer of fall protection equipment. Fall protection is all we do. So some of the products we went over today are just a small variety of what we manufacture, design, and test. Fall Tech, as a manufacturer of fall protection equipment, takes a lot of pride in designing and testing that product here. And like I said, manufacturing roughly 85% of it here in the U.S. Something I'm very proud of, and I hope that you get to enjoy some of our products and that quality that comes with it being made, manufactured, designed, and tested here in the U.S. A huge thank you to Matt for that insightful overview of the ABCs of fall protection. Genco Safety Supply is proud to offer the latest fall tech equipment, including the anchors, full body harnesses, and SRLs we discussed in this video today. If you're looking for SRLs that meet the latest ANSI standards or full body harnesses that offer top tier protection and comfort, visit GencoSafety.com and shop our full line of fall protection for fall tech. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and subscribe to Genco Safety Supply.